Hello again, this is Frederick Puyo with the Clean Energy Institute of GPEX. In this tutorial, we'll talk about the red screen files and the relationship between the project name and the file names. We'll then go and explain the implications in terms of file size and capabilities of using a .red versus an Excel file. Let's talk now about uh, files. So, first it's important to understand that your file name will uh, be using the information from the project name. So, let's say here that was a project in Toronto. Uh, if I type um, Toronto 80 kilowatt. And now we'll save the project. We can do that by either clicking on the save icon or selecting the um, Windows icon in Save As. Um, it will do the same thing. Either way will bring us to the dialog box. And that dialog box will provide two options for saving the file. We can save by default as a red file. And you notice that the red file uses the project name. Um, as well as the Microsoft Excel, so they use the project name. Um, the uh, the difference between the two is that the the new .red extension, the new .red type of file, is very small. We're talking about um, uh, in the range of about 100 kilobyte or um, maybe a, a couple hundred. Whereas with Microsoft Excel, we've got a much larger file um, because the Excel file contains all the macros. Uh, of the model of Visual Basic, all the programming that's used um, for all the different um, um, models, power models, um, whether it's uh, wind energy or cogeneration, energy efficiency, and all that, it's all contained in that file, so it's, it's fairly large. Um, there are some advantages to um, either uh, approach. I would say that uh, the, the red file is uh, great if you want to be able to save um, well, a, a file that's very small that you want to be able to uh, email or um, to uh, send electronically. Um, on the other side, there are some limitations to the red file. For example, if you were to add a um, blank worksheet uh, to a red file, it does not save that uh, worksheet and all the um, the calculation that may be there. So if you wanted to be able to keep that, the Excel XLSM file is the only way to do that. Uh, if you're using an older version of Excel, it, uh, the extension may just be called XLS. Here the M is for the macro file. Um, so um, it's up to you to weigh whether uh, you're going to need that, the, that ability to um, add other uh, worksheets directly in the Excel file that contains the model. So we'll start by using the red model. So save as, and then from there I'm going to uh, save that on my desktop for example. And uh, so here I'll just uh, call that Toronto 80 kilowatt red. And now what I want to show you is that let's say uh, you want to have uh, different um, scenarios, different options uh, for that file. So what you can do is um, you could actually save different data sets onto that same red file. It could be actually um, a photovoltaic and a wind energy project or, or also it could be another type of project. Um, but let's just use here uh, a project photovoltaic with different scenarios. So I'll just call that scenario one. And uh, let's say that um, that scenario has um, for the cost here um, uses method 2 and in that method 
uh, we're going to do um, just a little change. So let's say the feasibility study would be $12,000. Okay, so now we're going to uh, save that. And so what I can do here is I can save that into the, that same red file, or I could save that as a different one, but here I'll just put it all in the same. And um, when I do that, it's going to show every time the the different data set in the project database. So let's say here I put a scenario two with another cost option. And let's say here we have uh, $20,000 for development. That's scenario two. So save that in the same file okay and uh, just to uh, illustrate what I was saying earlier on is that if we add a new tab a new worksheet here where we have some other calculations um, pick up some information from the Financial analysis. I want to bring up the uh, annual savings. Okay. And uh, now, if we uh, if I save that as an Excel file, you'll see that the information will be kept there. But if I save that Scenario three as a red file, Toronto eighty kilowatt. But uh, the only thing is that it would uh, only have the last scenario. So okay, there we go. So um, to really understand how that works, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to. Um, um, close red screen and here this is something that um, is a little bit of imperfection and imperfection in red screen even though we just saved a file it asks us unlike with other application or in uh, Excel usually when we just saved it doesn't want ask us if we want to uh, save again and if you clicked on yes you could be in an endless loop there because every time you try to get out it will ask you to save again and again so here we'll say no because we know we just saved that okay and I'm going to bring back red screen and the next day whenever you want to uh, bring up your red file or your Excel file you have to do is go to the project database and go under user define okay and then um, just get the project that we just worked with so you can see here the um, last two project we work with so I'll bring the red file first and we can see the last data sets um, just to illustrate here that the uh, the tabs the, that information did not save I'm going to open that and 
and as you can see here it's not there it's just uh, it's blank that should contain the the last change that we did the 12,000 for the feasibility and 20,000 for the development I'm going to now open Windows icon and open and then select Microsoft Excel it can be quite tricky to find the, um, the file if you're not paying attention but uh, here by default it saves on the document um, so we can find that here another way also in Windows you could find that file is by looking at the recently changed files and here it's showing there so using one method or the other just uh, locate the file and you'll notice that now we have that sheet one in which we have the information that um, we had uh, entered so this is it for uh, working with files and um, the project database of RedScreen. I hope this video tutorial will give you a good head start for using RedScreen. The next video tutorial on RedScreen will guide you through intermediate concepts of RedScreen such as how to use the various tabs for cost analysis financial analysis, emission analysis, risk and sensitivity analysis, as well as the various red screen version 4 tools.